student to Gyan Niketan online class. This is my first class and today I am here with a poem for the students of class 12 as you can see written over here. It's for class 12 students and the name of the poem is this An Elementary School Classroom in a Slam by Stephen Spender. Okay? Now Stephen Spender was an English poet. He was an essayist and uh, he has written this poem uh, about the children of a slum who are studying in the elementary school. Okay, so this poem is about the children of an elementary school situated in a slum area. And what has been highlighted or shown in this poem is the inequalities that are prevailing in our society. These children of the slum, how they are deprived and how we treat them as an unwanted section that has been shown in the poem. And as you can see, the title is an elementary school. So what is an elementary school? Elementary school means a school which is a primary, primary school where very small children, very young children, they go to study. So it is about that school which is situated in the slum where very young children, they go to study. Okay? And how, what is the condition of the school? How are the students of the school that has been shown, that has been described in the poem? Alright? And at the end of the poem, uh, the poet has made an appeal through this poem. You can say that through this poem actually, what he has done is, Stephen Spender, he has made an appeal. Appeal to whom? Appeal to the influential section of the society, to the people who have power, who, if they want, can bring a change in the life of these children. So he is making an appeal at the end that these people who are having the power, who are having position in society, they should come forward, extend a helping hand, and help these children to overcome their pathetic condition and have a very successful and prosperous life. Alright? As you can see it is written over here. The poem is written in free verse. Free verse means it does not have any rhyme scheme. Generally the poems that you read up to class 10 that you have read you have seen rhyme scheme over there. But this poem is in free verse. It doesn't have any rhyme scheme. Okay? These are the examples of the figure of speech as you can see over here given. Okay? So several figure of speech you will find in the poem. I have mentioned some of them. While teaching the poem again I will tell you about it. Alright? So let's start the poem. And these are some of the word meaning that is given. You can go through them and you can understand. It will help you to understand the poem in a better way. Now let's start the poem. Far, far from gusty waves, these children's faces. Far, far from gusty waves. What is gust? Wind, breeze. Now wind, when wind comes, it has force, isn't it? It has force in it with which it blows using that force. What the poet is trying to tell over here? Far, far from gusty waves. Far, far means far, far away. Which is, which thing is far, far away? The energy, the force that wind is having, that wind has in it. That energy is lacking. From where? These children's faces, from the face of the children, that energy, that vigor, that is lacking. Understood? When you find small children, think about the children that you find in your school, 
the children of the elementary class. How are they? Very energetic, every time shouting, running, making noise, isn't it? But these children, they don't show any sort of energy. They don't show any sort of activities. They are far away from it. What is the reason? The reason is that they lack energy because they are victims of malnutrition. They hardly get good food to eat. Why are, am I talking about good food? They hardly get nutritious food. They hardly get two square meals a day to fulfill their hunger. So from where will they get the energy to make noise, to be active, to be full of vigor? Understood? That is why the poet is telling that these children's faces, and if you look at their faces, you won't find any sort of energy over there. It seems they are very tired, very exhausted, very dull type of look on their faces. And far, far is an example of repetition. Why? Repetition is because it has been repeat, repeated twice. Far, far. The two words, the same word has been repeated twice. That's why it's an example of repetition. Like rootless weeds, the hair torn round their pallor. Pallor is their pale face, dull face. Their hair is not neatly combed. Understood? They are children of the slum. They don't have a very neat look, very tidy look. Their hair is not properly combed. So their hair is love. They are spread all over their faces. As if they have been torn apart. Why it is given? The hair torn round their pallor. It seems that the hair have been torn apart. That is why it has been said. Because it is not properly combed. And like rootless weeds. These children of the slum. They have been compared with weeds. What are weeds? Weeds are the unwanted plants in a garden. Isn't it? Which we uproot and throw away because we think, we think that they will destroy the good plants. These children are exactly like these weeds, unwanted in society. We consider them as a burden for us. Understood? And rootless weeds, why this term rootless weeds? They don't have a very strong hold on the soil. They cannot hold the soil very firmly. It's very easy to uproot them. In the same manner, it's very easy to uproot these children, dump them in one corner of the society as unwanted thing. Why? Because they are poor section, they don't have the power of money, and they don't have any other strength. They are neither powerful, they are not wealthy. So it's very easy to uproot the poor section of the society and dump them at one corner and stamp them as unwanted. That is why these children, they have been compared with rootless weeds. Alright? That tall girl with her weight down head. Now, from the third line, what the poet has done? He has described the children who are there, the students present in the classroom. The first student is a tall girl. Why tall girl this particular reference has been met? Because the girl is taller than the students, than the girls of her age. And she is sitting there in the classroom with her head hung low. Why? Because she is burdened with poverty. She is again a victim of malnutrition, does not have the strength to sit straight with her head held high because she hardly gets good food, she lacks energy, okay? The paper saving boy with rat's eyes, the second child is a boy who is as thin as a paper and you can see the, because the boy has been compared with paper so that is an example of metaphor. But his eyes are very bright, like the eyes of rat. 
and that brightness in the eyes is reflecting hunger, greed. The boy is always searching in search of food because he does not get proper food, does not get enough food to satisfy his hunger. Understood? So the second child is a boy as thin as a paper, having bright eyes and everywhere looking. The eyes reflects, the bright eyes reflects hunger, reflects greed. The third child of uh, the stunted unlucky heir of twisted bones reciting a father's null disease, his lesson from his desk. The third child who is sitting there in the classroom is a boy who is who has been referred by the poet as an unlucky heir. Why? What is the meaning of heir? You can see given over here success. What has he succeeded? He has succeeded his father's gnarled disease. What is gnarled disease? Disease of twisted bones. This boy is so unlucky, the lucky children they have become the successor of their father's property, of their father's money. This child is so unlucky, what he has inherited from his father? His father's disease of twisted bones. But he is there in this class and he is having a stunted growth as well. What is stunted growth? It means that his growth is not according to his age. Okay, he is having a deformed body. The body is deformed. That is why he has been referred to as an unlucky heir. And the last, the fourth child, one un, at back of the dean class, one unnoted sweet and young, his eyes live in a dream of squirrel game in tree rope other than this. Another boy is there, the fourth child in the class, who is sitting at the back of the class. The back of the class is not very lighted, it's a dean, okay? Not very lighted, darkness is there. The poet is not able to see the boy. That boy, what is he doing? Is he paying attention to the class? No, he is looking out of the window of the classroom because outside the classroom on a tree, squirrels are playing. Squirrel is a very restless creature. This child is as restless as a squirrel and he wants, he is very interested to watch the game of the squirrel. Okay, so he is very interestingly looking at the game of the squirrel and not paying any attention in the classroom. But he is, he is very sweet and his eyes are full of dream. Okay children, this much today. We will continue with the rest of the poem in the next class.